Preparing to delve in three, two, one. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Delve. My name is Nathan. And I'm Alex. And hey, Alex, are you enjoying Raid Shadow Legends? I am not enjoying Raid Shadow Legends. Oh, darn. I have a question for you. If you were the kind of person who played Raid Shadow Legends, uh, what alignment would you be? Chaotic Stupid. Chaotic Stupid. Oh, yeah, that's a really good alignment to be. Uh, that actually segues perfectly, wink, wink, into our topic for today, because I wanted to talk to you a little bit about alignment and uh, the system that they actually built for D&D, which has been more mimetic of late, I feel, than anything else. You know what I mean? Um, you can explain it further if you'd like, so uh, everyone knows what you mean. Uh, well, you know how they uh, constantly have, like, the little alignment grid, but it's, uh, it's, like, different, it's like the Muppets as different alignments, or characters from The Office as different alignments. Well, yeah, I know an alignment grid is. It's got nine spaces, and they're all kind of just meme Yeah, I exactly. So that's what I'm talking about. But I wanted to talk about it in terms of, like, how it actually functions in the game. Go, go a little bit beyond the memes and what the Untitled Goose game would be in the <laughs> alignment grid. But uh, Nathan, can you be Untitled Goose game without honking? No, they found out that you cannot do that. You cannot. <laughs> Thanks, all. Paul. Anyway, <laughs> but, uh, oh, by the way, chaotic evil is the goose. <laughs> what, geese? Yeah, chaotic evil is a goose. I said it. Sorry, Canada. They're really just apologizing for all the geese. I wanted to talk about it not so much in terms of the, the fun uh, memes of having the little alignment grid, but actually what that alignment grid does for character development and what we get out of it. So, uh, Alex, you're definitely more familiar with this than I am. What would you say alignment really does for a character? Not a whole lot, really. It kind of dictates whether you should be, like, selfish, selfless. It doesn't dictate anything. It kind of gives you guidelines of, like, where your character's morality should be in cases, but... Does it really, like, change the way I'm supposed to play my character? Not really. I mean, you're just, like a lawful, good character supposed to be a law-abiding citizen that is, you know, helpful and like isn't evil, killing random people. Mm. Uh, you know, isn't setting places on fire and being crazy and disrupting the peace. I don't want to be that character. Do. I don't want to be that character. I want to. I want to have the option to set things on fire. Absolutely. So I can't. I can't be a paladin. Is basically. If that's an option, right? Like, paladins don't do that kind of thing, because they're lawful depends good. What paladin you, depends what god you serve, Nathan, but maybe that's just my rule. Oh. So if I'm, like, under a god that likes to set things on fire, then I'm actually just following my religion by being a pyromaniac. My personal rules on paladins is, yeah, if you're following a god that's a pyromaniac and his dogma is light things on fire, it is good. <laughs> All right. Then, then yeah. as a holy warrior of this god, who follows right. everything by example, mm -hmm. uh, for this deity, uh, yeah, you you don't want to light light shit on fire, Nathan. Yeah, it's I, good. Your god finds it great, and he gives you power for it. Oh my goodness, do, do I do I get like actual power in game for it, or is it just more of a narrative tool? I mean, paladins derive their power from their gods, and so do clerics. So I mean, in that case, yeah, you would you would. You would do these things to keep your, your godly powers, mm, okay. divine powers, I would assume. Okay. But we're talking about alignment and right. not religion. Right, 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 right. But I, I guess that that kind of, like, throws it into, if you look at the alignment grid, you have, like, lawful and then neutral and then chaotic. But, like, when I think of lawful as, as a general term, uh, I'm not thinking that I could, like, get away with the idea of, like, setting things on fire as lawful, but it does does lawful have to imply that it's to a law that you have yourself, or to the society at large that believes that there's law? You know, honestly, um, I think it could be played either way, because everyone's like, oh, well, rogues aren't lawful, but it's like, well, Robin Hood would have been considered Ooh. lawful. Would he? 
he had a code of conduct and he that was his uh his law essentially okay you know okay. he was helpful to the poor and stole from the rich and would not steal from the poor okay so like when you're thinking of lawful you're thinking about like a code that you follow implicitly yeah okay so it's a, either a code of conduct or a morality rule or something like that uh and so chaotic is basically i have no rules i'm gonna take off my pants and put a light lampshade on my head that's basically chaotic i don't know if you've been to those parties but <laughs> i have not well you've missed out my friend <laughs> so have i but if that's that's more of a chaotic like i don't have to follow uh, a necessary system I just do what I want when I want, deal with it. Yeah, yeah, well, you know. The thing I get confused at uh, by is, like, when I had my character, right, um, I think I technically was a true neutral. I was playing a monk. So I don't necessarily have any particular leanings one way or another, but I didn't really know if that meant that I had to be very boring in all of my choices. Like, what am I supposed to do? Like, do I have to have, like, a little board that says that Okay, well, I made some generally good choices. Now, in order to balance this out, I also have to do some bad choices. For neutral? Yeah. I mean, I think it's just you don't prefer one or the other, but I don't think there's a, a, a Galton board of, um, <laughs> oh, I, I was really good this week. I got to go murder some gypsies now. Um, I, I'm having a cheat day on my murder spree. <laughs> that, I think, was the thing. Like, when I was playing a character... I didn't really refer too much to, like, what my alignment was. When you were playing uh, your characters, like, some, some of the characters that you enjoy, do you remember what their alignment was and if it factored into the decisions that you made? I remember most of my alignments. Uh, I tend to play chaotic or neutral or neutral good uh, alignments more often than not. Mm. Um, so it doesn't really dictate the character too much. Yeah, for me, I think I just didn't really acknowledge it mostly because i was figuring that i kind of know how my character would relate to situations and that it would make logical sense for me to just do that i never really felt like i had to be informed by my alignment yeah not not typically i mean in older editions monk and paladin had alignment restrictions and i get think druid and barbarian did as well yeah that's what i was wondering about like does it actually restrict some of the things that I could and could not do. Yeah, Monk and um, Paladin had to both be lawful, mm. and Barbarian and Druids, I believe, could not be lawful. I, I think there is also, like, a rule to, like, if you wanted to be, like, a necromancer, you have to be uh, some kind of an evil, which I... Yeah, which... I don't think is right. <laughs> no, I mean, for... T I mean, I understand the reasoning behind it, but it it's not correct in, in our both opinions, apparently, because mm. um, not all necromancers are evil. I wanted to play a druid that was also a wizard necromancer uh, specialty who is a warden balancing life and death. Um, yeah. He would have been chaotic by nature, but not evil. Yeah, I had an idea for a necromancer that I wanted to play but I always kind of saw him as more evil curious than truly evil. Like he, like he dabbled in evil, but he wasn't really like big on it. He didn't naturally just make a ton of decisions because they were evil. He was more that it, he was, he was kind of had delusions of grandeur and power. And that's the reason why he did stuff. So he was interested. Is that the reason he does blood magic? Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where he's like, I want to have an army of the dead. <laughs> it's not that I'm necessarily evil, it's just that I think that this would really help me accomplish my goal. <laughs> I want to take shit over, so... That that would be a lot easier if I had a bunch of zombies and skeletons walking around <laughs> following me. Look at all these minions. Yeah. Huh. These yeah, make yeah. things so much easier. And I did think that he was more of a comedic character than anything else, which, you know, also doesn't really seem to lend itself to just, like, being a pure... I I want to turn you into a lamp kind of evil, you know. Did you ever play a character that was, like, evil evil? Evil evil? Not like, really. Like, uh, I, had, I had a one-shot character that was a tr actual troll and undead. Mm. That character was technically evil. I think I played uh, football with a dwarf's skull. Um, yep. 
It was okay. more lulzy than just evil. Right. The thing that also kind of confused me about alignment, maybe you can clarify this for me, is when people talk about like having an evil campaign or anything like that, I don't really understand why you couldn't have a character that was technically an evil alignment that was in the same party as a character that was technically a good alignment. Is that possible? Is it possible to have players that are opposing alignments in a party? Yeah. It's possible. It just makes some party dynamics a little weird or strained. Uh, I think a lot of times people don't encourage that. Mm. But like me, I'm like, yeah, no, if you're a party and like, let's say, Nathan, you and I are f- are, f- are friends. We're actually family, but whatever. Sure. Um, we'll, we'll... <laughs> but let's say like you and I have completely different moral compasses. Yes. We can use this as a, as a political spectrum if you wanted to, just for the thought process here. Sure. It's like, uh, can you be friends with someone who's diametrically opposed to you politically? Right. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah you can. You're just going to have bitter arguments about certain things and get angry with each other on things if you're that kind of person. Right. So you could have a character that's technically evil and one that's technically good, and you're working for the same basic objective, but you may have... Highly different philosophies when you get to a few specific subjects. Um, but yeah, that that's my analogy to that is because like if you're a hardcore Republican and I'm a hardcore Democrat, right? For instance, not to say Nathan is hardcore Republican or I am hardcore Democrat. I'm, Neither I'm of not, us is, no. is extremes on either of those things, right? Um, um, and I don't think we fall into those camps in general. No. Um, but yeah, you can you can be friends with someone and still disagree with them. Now in D and D terms. Alignment is, is, oh, you like skeletons and killing people. It's a little bit more strained than our political environment necessarily, but, I mean, it's doable. It's yeah. doable. It just, you have to, it, it really depends on the character's moral compass and where they draw the line of things they're willing to deal with right. uh, for another character. I, I see. Yeah, I, I suppose any setting where uh, dragons and magic are real is going to be a tad bit more strained than our actual <laughs> Our actual world environment. I had not played an evil character, but I always felt like if I were to play an evil character, it wouldn't really be the defining nature of that character. The The defining question that I have is, uh, do we really need to worry that much about alignments when it comes to our character and their development? Is it something that can just be used as a guideline without it being really overt? in terms of what it forces us to do as a player. I don't think it should force you to do anything, but I think if you're going to use alignments, you can use it to definitely encourage character growth and development, for sure. Mm. Because you can go, oh, I'm lawful good, and this character has to deal with the situation that is not lawful and not good. And it's like, where do they... Where does there... You know, it's a sense of morality, then. If you want to use it as a moral compass, you can. And I think that's interesting. And I think for that end, you know, the alignment spectrum is good because mm. you can go, oh, well, my character is, this is something that grates at my character's senses. You know, I'm lawful good. You know, this, I perceive myself as like a paragon of society. And lo and behold, I have just murdered this hobo. So you're a murder what, hobo. <laughs> what am I going to do about this? How am I going to deal with this? And what is the strife? You know, you can use these things as ways to address morality for sure. And it is, an interesting way mm. to do it, but I think the alignment axis is not necessarily like the best option for it because you can do that without that as well. Yeah, and I do find it a bit ironic that uh, you know parties that are technically good parties can become just as much a murder hobo squad <laughs> as any evil one you could encounter. Because <laughs> that happened with mine <laughs> too. Oh dear. Some of our more holy characters that we had like like the cleric and the druid and and were also some of the ones that ended up escalating a conflict way earlier than i might have thought to so it's just as possible to do something that's technically bad if you're like a good character maybe it's just how you're able to justify it i don't know i don't know nathan is is violence lawful and good uh Boy, that is an interesting philosophical question. As a general rule of thumb, 
I would say no, but... But crusades happened, and those were generally seen as holy. On both sides, yeah. Um, every Everyone kind of considered that to be a, a holy war. Um, hmm. Yeah, I, I guess it depends on where maybe that kind of goes back to that whole thing you were talking about lawfulness and following a system and an order i guess that could technically be applied to good and evil too like you know if i'm a good character it's because i'm following what i think is morally correct and if i'm evil i don't like that system and i want to destroy it i mean on that end who's to say what Evil people of what is considered evil aren't following what is considered their morally correct guidelines as well. That's right. that whole gray area there. And I guess this is kind of where I I end up getting really confused as like an outsider coming into it, looking at that alignment chart because I'm like, well, I don't really know how this is supposed to inform what I do. And then what I I got into when we were addressing this before about different D and D mechanics that might need to change. Alignment was really on the top of my list because I felt like if it's not necessarily going to inform my character's, you know, process or, or background or how I address situations, it might at least be nice if it had some kind of a mechanical component so that it felt like it, there was something actionable to it. But as far as my understanding goes, in its current form, there really isn't anything mechanical about alignment, right? Not really. Because, I mean, I could see, like, if you were, like, I'll, I'll give you a good example of this. You played a little bit of KOTOR, right? A little bit, yeah. Okay, okay. So there's a light dark mechanic. Yeah. <laughs> so there's, there's a light dark mechanic in that. And we've played Fallout, and there's a karma system in those. I kind of imagine it a little bit like that. You know, like, if I go really, like, hard to the light side, there are actually bonuses because I've really played that character to the light side. And if it's dark side, I've literally started to get bonuses because I've played to the dark side. Like, because I played to the alignment of my chosen type, I get bonuses for doing that thing that relates to that alignment that I've chosen, and that rewards me for playing in a certain way. I was wondering if you could implement something like that. Like in D&D? Into D&D, yeah. So, like, bonus points for being a goody-goody or a baddie baddie If you were, like, aligned as a lawful... If you were, like, aligned as a good character, and you were doing things that were good, that could eventually lead to benefits to your character, or same thing for evil, or same thing on, like, the lawful chaotic scale. Yeah. I mean, they do have, like, the Book of Vile Darkness and the Book of Exalted Deeds in D&D, which are, like, super holy and super evil stuff. Oh, really? Um, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if those are official or just third-party source books, but those are things that exist. I'll have to look into that, because I didn't know that those those existed. Uh, maybe they were for an earlier edition than 5. 3.5 definitely had them. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't know if 4.0 or 5 e did. It's, it's nice to know that they were at least thinking about that. Uh, in, I mean, someone was thinking about that. Someone, someone somewhere has, has asked this question before. But it sounds like it's at least been a little while. Now, this is something I was trying to figure out. When we think about alignment, we usually think about it in terms of Dungeons & Dragons. Because that's where the alignment chart always ends up being. But if we were to look at implementing this in another system, like let's say we're, 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 we're putting D&D off to the side, but we want to take the idea of alignment and we want to place it in something else. Doesn't even have to be an established system that we already know. Could be something brand new. Doesn't have to be like a Warhammer or a World of Darkness. It could so be... it could be Raid Shadow. RPG. It could be Raid Shadow Legends. We could put it into Raid Shadow Legends. No, whatever game we're building. Let's say you wanted to put alignment into a system you're building. Would you do? Any... I want to put alignment into a system I'm building. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for taking that literally. Okay. <laughs> now. It, what would you want to do differently with that system? Would you want to rename stuff or change its functionality in any way? Uh, I'm not sure. I I don't necessarily know if the terminology for like lawful to chaotic and good to evil necessarily makes sense. Like for for me, I actually kind of liked the idea of a karma system in some way. 
like they had in, in Fallout, or the way you play. Oh, that would be interesting, too. If you had an alignment system that was based on the way you play your character. Have you ever played... Oh, God, what was the game? I'm thinking Dishonored. The way you play uh, is uh, you'll go through a mission, and you can take, like, lethal and non-lethal options, basically, for, for everything that you do. Uh, you can play super stealthy, or you can do more of, like, an assault. You know, you can you could do these things. You could do a non-lethal, but uh, also a very assault-like run. You know, we're ju just using non-lethal methods to try and take out all, neutralize your opponents, but you are running and gunning it through. Or you could be, like, oh, okay. in the shadows and, like, stealth kill a lot of people, too. You, you have options. At the end of each one of those missions, there's a graph. It has a, a metric of, like, lethal to non-lethal and then uh, stealthy to assault. And it will show you where you were on that chart. So you get a real idea, not so much about, like, your moral alignment so much, but, like, literally your actions and what happened there. And it does actually affect what happens as the game progresses, because it will determine whether you go to a high chaos or a low chaos ending. Uh -huh. And generally, a low chaos ending is a very optimistic one, where you didn't kill off a lot of people. And then the high chaos one is a kind of a very cynical ending because you did. And that means the plagues end up spreading and uh, things just d devolve into chaos as, you know, you, you go on this murder spree. So there's some actual encouragement and actual story elements to the reasons why you would want to do certain things. I'm wondering if something like that, where it's not like a set alignment system, but one that actually graphs based on your actions took place. Like, you don't necessarily start with an alignment, but you develop an alignment over time. Like, if everyone started as neutral, and then... And then your actions dictate how you go up and down on this? Yeah. Could you see that, that implementing? Yeah. In a, in a tabletop role-playing game, yeah. that would be very hard, because that requires a lot of bookkeeping. Yeah, most of my ideas do require a ton of bookkeeping, which is why we don't end up doing them. But See, in something like the game Fable, that's fine, because the programming calculates these additions and subtractions for you. Right. Doing it on paper is a little bit harder. Right. The other problem is, like, it's nice that you brought up Fable, because there is an inherent problem with that. The problem with Fable is that it, uh, it turns morality into a stat game. So you start thinking about, like, oh, I kill a bandit, that's five good. Uh, I steal an apple, that's three good. Or three bad. So apparently stealing two apples is worse than killing a bandit. Yeah, I mean, they're all, they're all, they all end up being stat games if you get bonuses one way or the other. Because then, even, even in the game I've been playing, uh, Inquisitor Martyr, there's a morality compass, and it's not a compass, it's, there's a morality line, it's radical and puritan uh, mm. for 40k, and you either go fully one way or you go fully the other way. There's no in-betweens because mm. you don't get anything. So it's kind of like the, uh, the Jedi stuff where it's like you either go full dark or full light because okay. you only get the bonuses at the end of that spectrum. Here's a thought. What about if you took like your, your alignment system? But we just do what I was talking about in reverse. So you start with an alignment, but then you have to sort of stay inside of that alignment to get some kind of a bonus based on what, what alignment you have. Like if you actually put something, it doesn't even have to be all that like major in terms of your character development or what they can do. But you get something depending on what alignment you choose. And then... As long as you kind of stay true to that alignment, you continue to get that. But if you change as a character, you would have to give that up in favor of something else. I feel like that's something that the GM themselves would have to determine, that your alignment has physically changed. Yeah, I think that that would raise a lot of contention from people, whether their actions really dictated that that was a thing or if it didn't quite count. 
Right. I mean, I feel like your actions should count for something. Like, I right, but then people would argue, oh, it was only one beggar. <laughs> I only killed that one hobo that one time. He was. They try to rationalize it, is what happens. Right, 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 right. It just like becomes one. a game of who's a better uh, arguer and who can last the longest and who gives in first. But, I mean, that kind of feels, too, a little bit like Bloodlines. I think it was in, in Bloodlines, which was all based on World of Darkness because it's Vampire the Masquerade. And in Vampire, which was more recent, there's a certain um, humanity level, so you can actually divulge further and further into being more uh, the monster of a vampire or stay more true to humanity, depending on like how many people you decide to suck the blood from, you know, and uh, the actions that you take. Like, I, I feel like you could probably implement that without it being incredibly heavy on the mechanics. I think probably it just, to what end? Like, what would be the point of it? What would it achieve? What would what would you, you get, get out, of, out it? of it is the question. Like, yeah. would it add to roleplay or add to mechanics? Or right. would it give you bonuses or negatives, for instance? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's all stuff you need to consider for those. I know. You, it, whenever you're implementing a system like this, you have to ask, like, what do you actually get out of it? Which actually leads me to probably my most controversial statement of the episode, Alex. That you're playing Raid Shadow Legends currently as we talk? <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I, I have picked up one of the other games from that same developer to try that out. And I can tell you it's better than Raid Shadow Legends, so there's that. Oh, well, does this one have 4 million downloads on the App Store? <laughs> yeah, actually it... it did it it didn't have nearly as many as as rage rage actually had like so it's million. so it's better than raid shadow legends but it doesn't <laughs> anyways okay it doesn't have as many views but it, there there's actually like stuff you do that feels like choices you make <laughs> i was like oh well at least they did something no my my most controversial opinion is maybe there shouldn't be an alignment system if it doesn't really do anything for your character what would your opinion be if I said, literally, maybe we just get rid of alignment altogether and the pitchforks and torches? Around? I don't think it would do much. You would, you would simply have your clerics um, pick whether they want to spontaneously cast heals or inflicts at, on character generation. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's really about it. I mean, paladins yep. would be smite good or smite evil then. Or smite law or, you know. Um, yeah. Actually, you know, it wouldn't even be that. You just have your clerics would choose whether they inflict or they heal with their mm -hmm. spontaneous casting. Yeah. Um, paladins would just dictate based on their deity. Yeah. Um, and it wouldn't be a matter of good or evil and awful or chaotic. It'd be a matter of your domains. And like what? So it wouldn't yeah. be smite evil. It'd be smite like something specific other category or just generally smite yeah and then you determine what you are smiting yeah smite foe smite fucking crab you could you could actually do a thing where you're you you called like what the thing is that you smite uh if you were to look at rangers they have like preferred enemies types oh the favorite i mean yeah you could you could do that as as a smite with smiting for a, a, a fucking paladin yeah smite nathan yeah we'd have smite nathan and, and i would just have bonuses whenever i use it and i'd have to use it on nathan's yeah exactly comes in real handy the next time we play out lovers of aether <laughs> yeah smite nathan ah, been hit with a hammer abso pass me over for some brush so <laughs> smite nathan again That'd be great. It would be that polar bear, too. He'd be like, oh, you just got smited? I'm actually 32 years old. <laughs> <laughs> I went back and I watched some of the had to get it. I laughed all over. Okay. I, oh, my family can starve tonight. I'm going to the dance. <laughs> I, I fucking love that. Yeah, I, I was just trying to figure out, like, it feels like when they started alignment way back in the day, it was to try and guide people to role-playing because the system for Dungeons & Dragons was very combat-heavy, and so role-playing was not really as much of a focus, and I feel like in the day and age that we live in, where 5e really does encourage people to do a lot of role-playing on their own, and people kind of understand that aspect more, 
alignment doesn't seem to have nearly the weight that it might have had before because people can kind of figure it out on their own. Would you agree with that? Um, to a degree. I mean, back then it was, you know, it was like a miniature game even. So I don't know if alignment would have really mattered, but I think right. what it was is tried. I think what it tried to be is a tool to make people role play out these things and build their characters into archetypes. So mm -hmm. do you see that as being as useful now? I, I don't, I really don't. It's yeah. Especially like with 5e specifically, they're like, hey, here's some background stuff to give you like a direction for your character. Yeah. Even newer people to the game have an idea of like, oh, my character's kind of like this or kind of like that. Or like, oh, I want to make my character this way. I think, yeah. I think now it's not as necessary and mm -hmm. might even be more of a hindrance in some cases. Yeah, and uh, and I think that there's probably a case to be made where uh, background is a more detailed way to flesh out your character than alignment, which actually reminds me that we should probably in the very near future do a show about backgrounds and the functionality of those, because I've been wanting to do that for a while, too. We haven't done um, on backgrounds? We have not. We We never did anything on backgrounds. Oh, you know why we didn't do something on backgrounds? Because what? stories from the Fifth Age... Right, thing back in the right, day. right, right, right. But they haven't been doing that for a while now, so we no. we might want to touch on it, uh, and also just how it generally functions mechanically, because there is actually some mechanical functionality to backgrounds, which we yeah, don't have yeah, to get there, into. There are, but, yeah, they do things. They actually they do, things. do things. Yeah, yeah. So maybe at uh maybe at a later date we should we should talk a little bit about that. But if you were building a system specifically, which I know you've done on occasion. Would you consider putting an alignment system in, or would you rather just not have something like that at all? I would consider put, putting an alignment system in if it served a greater purpose within the system mechanically. Okay, so As it does a, have to have a mechanical component. If yeah. it has a mechanical component. Otherwise, it's straight up roleplay, and it doesn't yeah. need an actual system. It just needs a brief outline. <sighs> yeah, I, I feel like if it's something that's for roleplaying... That really shouldn't be so much on the system and should be more on the players themselves. Yeah, you can have a slight set of guidelines for it, um, yeah. but if, if, if it's not mechanical in nature or a rule set that needs to be followed, right? And I don't think implementing it as a full functioning thing of its own is really that important. It doesn't need like a background. It's like, oh, this is just, you know, like profession. You, you yeah. don't need to put profession in if there's no real reason for it but if it does storytelling yeah. stuff it's like cool and you could do like mm -hmm. a simple anything you're you have a profession in you can pick like up to two you know you mm -hmm. get a bonus to any checks dealing with it and that could be as simple as that yeah that's that's what i'm used to is uh that like i have a profession i think in calligraphy it's never come into play i've never had to utilize that skill but i guess i have it and you never know it could be useful but, I mean, at least it has some, some f functionality. It's very limited, and it's probably more story-driven than anything else. But that does make me wonder, like, if I were, like, a good character or I was a lawful alignment and I was talking to another character that was also a lawful alignment, if I would be able to get a bonus to a speech check or a religion check. It would depend. Like, if you're, like, worship the same god, you would get a check. But, oh, we both follow the rules? Yeah, no, that, that's fine. There's, there's no reason for that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe unless you know a secret language that only lawful characters know. Oh, yeah. That'd like become, Druidic like, or like Thieves Can't. That's what I was wondering, like Thieves Can't, yeah. See, I could see uh, an alignment system used in that way, where at least I get, like, a bonus or, or you know, I, I get something to... Oh, yeah, your, your lawful characters speak in legalese. <laughs> so when you're looking at legal documents... <laughs> You get a bonus. Yeah, and you get uh, a bonus to getting out of jail early because you're such a goody goody. Yeah, you get a you get a get out of jail free card, yeah, and you can bail your and you get cheaper bail out for all your bards shenanigans. And if you're uh if you're lawful evil, you buy up all the hotels before the other players can buy them. Yeah, lawful evil gets a terrible turndown service. And if you're if you're true neutral, you just buy like um. You just buy like Baltic Avenue and Mediterranean. <laughs> and you you just... would, uh, you if you're true neutral, you just end up like the uh, neutral planet from Futurama. Yeah, 
I tell said. my wife I said hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man, that should be a grid of just like the Futurama alignment grid. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that it's, exists already. It's, if it does, I'll try to put it in the post. <laughs> yeah, you'll have I'll, to um, I'll throw you'll it have to post. Google it, but I'm pretty sure that works uh, because True Neutral is a neutral planet, and Fry is like chaotic good, yeah. Bender is like chaotic evil. <laughs> or neutral evil. I think Leela is lawful good, or lawful There's... neutral, or I don't know. I think I think it exists. Chaotic chaotic evil would be Robo Santa. Oh uh, no, chaotic evil is probably Roberto. Now I have to look it up. Uh, yep, I think, but I'll uh, do that after. I'll do that after. I if think, you want to know if there is one, you can check I think out Professor the post. Farnsworth. Would be chaotic neutral. Now we have to, uh, in lead up to this episode, we're going to have to post our favorite um, uh, alignment grid memes. Oh yeah, there you go. People. Just and, and later on in the Discord in our multimedia channel, share yep. your uh, favorite alignment grid meme. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's not just a meme; no. it's also like an actual thing that exists. <laughs> it is that, that is used. We'll um, we'll rate you based on your alignment grid. Perfect. Can't wait you'll for get, that. You'll get stars. Uh, I think if there if there's a star emoji, I'm gonna see if there's a star emoji. Hold on. If there's a star emoji, we're using it. There is a star emoji. Perfect. Perfect. We will rate them based on stars. Yep. All right. So, uh, Alex, if uh, the folks out there wanted to discover more about their alignment to our show, where could they go? You can align to our show over at delvcast.com. That's right. There you can find out uh, if you are indeed a chaotic evil or if you are a lawful good. If you are a lawful good, hey, check out our Patreon. See what I did there? <laughs> and, and check. Hey, you know what? Even if you're a chaotic, chaotic evil, good. if you're a chaotic good, you should totally check out the, the Patreon and uh, see all of the other offerings that are uh, sort of just stuff that we wouldn't normally post, uh, and extended episodes that have all of the stuff that we don't usually put out for human consumption. All the parts of this episode you didn't hear. All the parts of this episode. Except for the you people didn't that hear. are hearing it all because they're on Patreon. Because they're on Patreon. That's right. It's a little bit of an insider edge, and uh, and you usually see things a little bit ahead of time. Uh, whenever I can get them up, I try to put them out to Patreon. Fun fact, everyone on Patreon doesn't hear about Raid Shadow Legends That's every true. episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we cut we cut those out of specifically the Patreon episodes. Yep. And the, pa- the patrons know that that's not true. <laughs> even the patrons, <laughs> the patrons know definitely know that's not true. No, no. There, if anything, there's even more discussion of it, but that's okay. Actually, on... <laughs> On request for many of our patrons, we will literally shut the fuck up about it for a year. We'll we'll go on for to one, a different game. To for complain. only one dollar a month, we will never mention. Yeah, if you do Raid that, Shadow will, Legends again. Hashtag will, not sponsored, but sponsored by you. It's gonna be like that uh, Kickstarter thing that they did for Undertale, where for like the thirty-one dollar level, you did not get um what well, Papyrus's cool song. Oh yeah, I literally saw. I was watching a video that talked about that yesterday. Actually. Outside Xbox, <clears throat> and then for thirty-two dollars, every single song in the game is replaced with Papyrus's cool song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was that was the video they did for Outside Xbox. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the one I watched. Yeah. The Kickstarter thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was funny. Yep. Um, yeah, it's just replaced with <laughs> Papyrus' school song for all of those terrific, like, really touching moments. Boop, 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 boop. Yeah, that's great. I still have not played Undertale. No, I have not either. So I, don't feel bad. I refuse to. You refuse to? I refuse to. Un- and protest? Uh, yeah, in, in protest to Toby Fox exploding at MatPat for that bullshit last right, right 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 that whole thing that's also the reason you won't play delta rune yeah well that's also toby fox, toby fox. So. yeah exactly sorry yeah. but if you're getting free advertisement by someone who's got hundreds of thousands of people watching their streams mm-hmm. don't bitch at them first calling your game similar to another game that people fucking loved we went over this in a, in a live show or a show that was yeah we went over this at the beginning of last year with a uh, if you're looking for it, it's called uh, Giant Slayer Syndrome. We we it's talked about that, that, that in terms of a lot of different things, actually. But that was kind of the uh, the igniter to that flame. <laughs> we we yes. did. If you wanna if you wanna hear me rant with Nathan about how you shouldn't be a dick, 
especially yep. if you're getting free advertisements. Uh, go check that episode out. Yep, yep. Uh, we we talked about a whole lot of things on that episode, actually. Did we? Uh, we vented. I think we vented. Yeah, we vented a, a whole lot. Um, that was actually one of those episodes where we were we were actually coming to the defense of some of the bigger creators in 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 the in the space. Um, because sometimes the criticism is unnecessary. <laughs> So if you want to find yeah. that episode and all of the yeah. other episodes, you can actually go to DelveCast.com. And if you wanted to find us on the social media, we have Twitter accounts. I am at Citanium. I am at EXP Limited, and the show is at Delve Podcast. Uh, so check those out to get the latest info from our site. Uh, and, of course, I want to thank our shiny level patrons. We have three of them now. Three. We have uh, Don Perry. Bonnie Ainsworth, and Nick joining the ranks. Thank just you Nick? So much. No last name? Just Nick? Nick? Nicky Nick? He, Nick, Nick. He, he, Nick, like, share or anything like that. <laughs> he, he, said, he said just to go with Nick. Keep it simple, keep it clean. Just call me So Nick. not fucking Nick? Because <laughs> so, it's keeping, keeping it clean, right? Yeah, keep it, keep it absolutely. Yeah, no, not motherfucking swearigen. <laughs> you just, it's, it's, uh, it, it's just Nick. It's like Cher or Madonna or anything like that, or whatever you want. A uh, prince could be like that. Whatever you want. So thank you for uh, joining those ranks and helping us keep the digital lights on. That's why you're shiny. You help keep the digital lights on over here. Of course, you can find us on all kinds of podcast apps. Uh, you can find us on, I think, Apple Podcast. It's not iTunes now, which is stupid. But anyway, you can find us there. Uh, Google Play, you can find us on iHeartRadio, Spotify now. So check us wow. out. Wow. All those, but yeah, I know. Everything's on Spotify now. So, uh, Everything that's is fun. everywhere. Yeah, we're just all over the place. It's all, it's, all, it's all part of the cloud. It's all part of the cloud. We live in the cloud now. <laughs> that's a fun place to be. Hopefully it doesn't rain. Or I lose my house. Anyway... <laughs> Thank you for joining us, and we will see you on the next episode. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. I can't remember what the game was, but there was one where... Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It had a, a grid, and it would reward you... Maybe it was Thief. Anyway, it was a, a grid that actually... No, I'm thinking Dishonored. Okay, so in Dishonored... Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Which you haven't played. I'm glad that's edited out. <laughs> yeah. In Dishonored, <laughs> the way... <laughs>